This is the Remington R1 Enhanced, and uh, they did a quite a different uh, improvements over the original R1. Uh, this is more of your, uh, you know, competition type style weapon. Uh, so, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's a it's a gorgeous weapon. Uh, of course, you can't not say that a 1911 isn't a beautiful weapon. Uh, the fever of the 1911 starting to come back. Uh, I've always loved 1911s, absolutely. But unfortunately, uh, you know, there for a while back, I uh, didn't have no dang money to afford the damn 45, and it's still gone up. <laughs> but uh, it's all right. I sold. Uh, well, I didn't sell. I traded man a couple of things of mine, 22s for this thing. I thought it was a good deal. I mean, it's a thousand dollar 1911. So. Uh, but anyways, I tell you what, it's a beautiful 1911. I like to go over a little bit with y'all to the specifications. Maybe y'all interested in buying a Remington uh, R1 enhanced, or maybe just a Remington R1, or maybe just a 1911 in general, just to give y'all a different uh, view on the the different type of 1911s out there. Um, there are a lot of good ones. Uh, I saw a lot of really good cheaper 1911s. Uh, you know, like the, I had a, my, my first one was a Rock Island Armory, a GI model actually. Uh, it was a Franken gun because it had uh, so many Wilson combat aftermarket parts and Colt barrel and etc. But that thing ran, you know, smooth. Never had a problem with it, but sold it because of the ammo. But I'm getting back into them. Uh, this is my second one I've acquired. Yeah. First one I did a review on is my Springfield. This is my Remington. Uh, pretty soon I'm gonna be trading a guy for a uh, Taurus. Maybe any in, in you guys watching this, you can give me some opinions about the Taurus. Uh, I've been researching it. I, I, th I think it's a pretty good 1911. Uh, it's a really, I mean, the, the craftsmanship is real fine. I mean, uh, forged barrel, uh, forged frame and slide, so you can't go wrong with that. And they're about what seven, seven fifty. But a uh, training guy for one of my rifles for those uh, about a week from now. It's a stainless, uh, all stainless steel, but it's very beautiful 1911. So, and y'all have any experience with it or know about? It, just you know, maybe you can t PM me or leave me a comment in the channel and uh, let me know what it's all about. That'd be appreciated. But let's get back into this again. This is a Remington R1 Enhanced 1911. Of course, uh, brought to you by John Moses Browning <laughs> and his ever so awesome uh, inventions that have blessed the shooting world, the uh, sports world, and have saved a lot of uh, soldiers in different uh, theaters of combat. And still in use, such as this and the uh, Browning 50 caliber. So let's uh, go into a little bit of specifications with this. Uh, now, this is a 45. Uh, caliber pistol for y'all that are just getting in the 1911s. Uh, usually they uh, call the uh, 45 caliber either 45, 45 auto or 45 ACP. So anywhere between those two, they usually abbreviate just 45, 45 auto or 45 ACP. So now that some of y'all that are just getting into 1911s, be careful when y'all buy ammo. Don't buy a 45 long Colt thinking that someone said 45. And if it says 45 Colt, don't buy it. Just try to look for the ACP or auto. Uh, for y'all that already know about that, just bear with me. I'm just trying to let the people that don't know, know. <laughs> and then, you know, anybody that's just looking around 1911s, i just give you a little heads up there. Now, this is a uh, the enhanced model. It does have a... Um, uh, let's see what we can start with. You start with the trigger here. This trigger has is a, uh, I believe it's an aluminum trigger. I think it's aluminum. But, um, oh, man, what is this? Alright, sorry about that, guys. Shit. Yeah, this is a uh, aluminum trigger. Uh, match grade. Now, the uh, standard settings are uh, 5 uh, pounds, but here in the front, you see you can adjust it from 5 anywhere to uh, 3.5 pounds. The current settings I have it on now is uh, 3.5 pounds because I like that very light crisp trigger. And I'll tell you what, this thing has a beautiful trigger. 
in that slide and frame it's like butter like I mean it's like rubbing your hand on glass brother it's smooth as hell it's awesome now you have an adjustable rear sight right here if I can say like a Novak type style adjustable sight of course you can see the Remington logo on the side there in small print uh, we have a front sight, which is a uh, your uh, fiber optic type sight. And it's red. I don't know if they have any different colors, but this is a fiber optic front sight. Now, of course, here you can see that we do have serrations in the front and serrations here in the rear. On the GM models, you have just your straight... Um, up and down type serrations. They're very, they're very skinny and narrow, uh, and they're uh, these are more angled and wide, which I like that you get a more of a sure grip on there, and I like them being in the front and the back. Depending on what your position, your body is, or your movement, you can charge it either way. That's why they uh, did that. Now you do have a beaver tail grip safety with a checkered memory bump. Now this is just like the Ed Brown style of beaver tail. Uh, Ed Brown does use the checkering right there on the beaver tail. Very nice. I do like that. It feels good. Hold it. I do like that very much. Absolutely. Very nice, ain't it? Of course you have your um, hammer here. Skeletonized hammer. But, you know, a lot of people prefer that. I do. I mean, people say weight, but shit, that ain't much weight at all. It don't really matter. I just like the look of it, tell you the truth. Of course, right here, you have your enhanced thumb safety. Elongated, widened paddle for easier access. Of course, you can see it is not ambidextrous. I'm sure you could put something on the right side for you uh, left-handed shooters but there's only one on this model and it is on the uh, left-handed side for right shooters but very good very stiff uh, sure click none of that just slowly pop or crack into place it's very tight and positive I like that it's very qual very quality um, of course, we have the uh, flat checkered mainspring housing. I can't really show you that until I take it down. We have the front grip strap serrations. A lot of 1911s, it's smooth that they actually, you know, and not I mean don't make a lot of difference, but. I guess if your hands were sweaty, it probably would. More than you'd probably think. Now the uh, grips, I originally came in here were like the VZ style with the thumb groove, but I guess the guy put these on there. And these are nice. I mean, they're not as nice as the VZ, but these are more like the, looks like your type of roofing, di roofing paper and shit, right? It looks like roof. <laughs> roof tiles but it's it's gritty it's nice I mean it has good grip to it that's probably why I put on there a little bit more uh, sure grip on there when he's shooting so they're not too bad I'll probably put VZ grips on them I like those a lot better and of course uh, it comes with two eight round magazines and that's gonna be pretty much your standard guys uh, for y'all that uh, getting in a 1911 say uh, uh, anywhere between seven and eight round magazine. Uh, they do have ten round mags. Uh, say Ch Chip McCormick has, you know, for competition. Uh, but uh, I'm sure they have all up to a thirty round stick mag. I wouldn't recommend that. I think it's a little bit excessive. But that's going to be your standard uh, magazine capacity, guys. Between seven and eight rounds with the uh, forty five uh, auto or ACP nineteen eleven. Uh, of course, when you have a nine millimeter or thirty eight super, you're probably going to be able to stack a little bit more because of the uh, decreased size of the uh, cartridge uh, used. Of course, you can see here Remington Arms Company, Ilion, New York. Gets that right? And of course, you can see it here. This is the enhanced model. 
Now this is a match grade barrel. Absolutely a match grade barrel also. Get a better view of it here. Sorry, I had to itch my face there for a second. Now, so this is a match grade barrel, and it is a five inch. Your type, I guess you people call it a government uh, size. Uh, you got your, you know, government commander. You got your carry and all that, but this is the uh, traditional five inch 1911. That's the ones I like. Of course, like I said, it's not loaded, guys. Now, there is a magazine in the uh, well with rounds in it, but there's not one chambered, just so you can see. Don't worry, it's not pointing at my face. This is at an angle from me. Far away from my face. Just showing y'all. Of course, the uh, you can see the uh, rifling in there. That is a 1 in 16 left-hand twist. That's a good twist for the 45, 230 grain uh, bullet. It's a good stabilizing twist for it. Uh, the overall length of this, guys, is uh, eight and a half inches from its uh, uh, longest points, and the uh, height is five and a half inches at its highest points. Um, like I said, I did go over the trigger between five and three and a half, depending on what you like, and it is adjustable. And the uh, weight of this is about 40 ounces, I believe. Um, loaded is probably going to be around 45 ounces, but I, for y'all that do like a heavy metal gun I do don't get me wrong I like my polymer guns but there's something about holding this gun that just feels real <laughs> like well, fuck all guns are fucking real but you know what I mean it just feels like yeah I'm an American man fucking awesome it just feels like you're holding America in your hand you know I don't know I love it man I really do a little bit of oil there just cleaner when I got it. I put a little oil back in the fire pan area and extractor and put a couple drops inside there so it can soak in there and soak it up. I don't know if he ever cleaned it up. It was pretty dirty. Didn't look like he did. Of course, you can see the eject support it has been milled down to. Uh, allow for more uh, reliable uh, ejection I wish I'm see if I can open this uh, slide here it's gonna take real quick guys I promise look at that I didn't even take that long see it's not that bad <laughs> look at that now that is a throated barrel you can see where they white where they open it up and they polished that real nicely. That's what match grade barrel man. It's a beautiful. They did a real good job on it. Feed ramp. Uh, the feed ramp's not like you would expect it to be the same as the stainless, uh, but they pretty much. I mean, it, it's nicely polished. It's just the 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 uh, feed ramp is uh, blue just like the frame, but it ain't no big deal. It still feeds great. This finish, guys, if you're wondering, this is a uh, black oxide finish, uh, satin black oxide finish, if you will. If I can get a good... Now, if you look at that, that, that to me, that reminds me of a Glock type finish. The finish is very nice on here. Very evenly distributed, but it's really, really nice. I do like it, and it looks just like a Glock type finish. Very nice. Trying to get every little bit of it, guys, so you guys can see it. 
So I ain't talking in the meantime. I'm just trying to let y'all look at it. Get y'all. I know a lot of people don't got get in real close with stuff. I I try to get as close as I can so you guys can see most of it. Now some of the stuff you see, I I, I guess that's a lighting effect, but that ain't rust. I can't even see that crap with when the camera's off it. Remington. Oh yeah. And now guys if you didn't know is Remington did make firearms. Um in uh I believe in the World War One and World War Two. Uh maybe it was just maybe one of the wars, but I know Remington did make firearms because Colt couldn't keep up with the demand and the orders the government was wanting, so a lot of different companies uh, you know, came in and started making the 1911s for the war effort. Uh, like I said, called Remington, Springfield, uh, shit, Ithaca, uh, believe it or not, also Singer. And, uh, and Singer, I said Singer sewing machines. <laughs> That's uh, actually the rarest 1911 you can find. I believe there's only about 500 Singer 1911s. They have a pretty fat price tag on them. But yeah. Singer Sewing Machine Company did make a 1911. 500 in total. I mean, I've seen one. Nothing to write home about, but shit, it's still pretty cool to have a one of 500 1911s made. Can't complain there, can you? Mm -mm. Sure can't. Now, guys, uh, I didn't go over it, but this 1911 is a forged frame, a forged um, barrel, and a forged slide. Uh, this is not your typical cast. Uh, not that cast is, you know, horrible. I don't prefer it because, I mean, it can fail due to, you know, it's not as well processed. could be air bubbles in the metal, and it's just, you know, not forged. I prefer a forged anything and uh, uh Remington delivers when it comes to that they forge like I said the slide the barrel on the frame and some of the parts are uh in mem I believe very uh, very few but I know there are mem parts metal injection molding but uh for y'all are like oh my god metal injection molding well believe it or not even Kimber uses mem actually Kimber uses a lot of fucking mem parts so yeah. Again, guys, this is a Remington R1 Enhanced 1911. I'm not sure if they have a uh, different model or not. I mean, not different model, but uh, a chamber in a different caliber. I doubt it. But for y'all that are curious, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to go look uh, now these these magazines I, I wanted to go over these these are uh, you see it's that finish right here that is a black oxide uh, nitrate I think it's nitrate or some shit like that type finish just like this uh, 1911 here so you can see the finish here see the finish on here they're pretty much the same now these magazines, they're not well-known company, but they're actually made by a company out of Georgia. I believe it's Georgia, but they're uh, called Cajun Tactical, and uh, they make awesome magazines, man. I mean, these are compared; these are comparable to your Wilson Combats. I mean, they have a no-tilt follower. Uh, the uh, follower itself is a polymer, so uh, you know it's a more uh, reliable in feeding, and you know it don't snag or hang up or scratch. It uh, feeds a lot more smoother when it's rubbing against, uh, you know, a metal body. But this is these are called uh, Cajun Tactical magazines. I would check them out. Um, I was lucky enough to find them find them on e uh, eBay. Uh, a company was selling them Cajun Tactical, twenty dollars a pop. Awesome deal. Awesome magazines. Um, to me, they can almost look like a Met Gar mag, but they're not. Like I said, look them up. Cajun Tactical, great mags. Um, these rounds in particular, for y'all that don't know, 45 or anything like that in defense-wise, um, 
these are actually Hor oh, no, they are Hornady uh, XTP self defense rounds um, plus P for y'all that are just getting the 45 I would recommend these um, the reason like I said they are a plus P meaning plus pressure and they are a 230 grain bullet uh, bonded uh, traveling at 950 feet per second so that's just 50 feet per second shy of a thousand and of course the Hornady has the same same well has the defense rounds called the uh, I guess the zombie whatever and that's 185 grain traveling at a thousand so you have 185 grain traveling at a thousand and 230 grain traveling at 950 so I'll give up 50 feet per second which is not that much at all and you get a way heavier bullet traveling almost the same speed and so uh, yeah I would definitely recommend these Hornady XTP defense rounds uh, in uh, 45 caliber so and because uh, I've heard great things about them, um, I usually carry HSTs, but I can't find them. So these would probably be my second bet. Oh man! Well, guys, and like I said, this is the uh, an enhanced version. I mean, I I can't really think of anything else that would I mean uh, enlighten y'all or make y'all want it any more. From what I've showed you, I, I could hope that you'd want it. <laughs> Just looking at it, I mean, shit, how could you not? Looking at everything that's, that it's part of, I mean, it, like the history of Remington and all that. Just, you know, Remington's always yelled quality from, you know, the first days of Remington making barrels, you know, all the way up to uh, designing his uh, flintlocks and per mass producing those and you know making them uh, rifles for the military and foreign militaries and you know going almost to the brink of extinction back all the way up again so Remington has a rich history guys a very very interesting history um, you know they these guys deserve a lot of credit and respect in the uh, firearm kingdom uh, they are a uh, part of American history regardless if you're anti-gun or not I mean Remington definitely is part of America's history they're pure American just like apple pie and it's been this being a Remington and a 1911 I mean you can't get any more American than that guys you really can't so uh, I appreciate y'all for watching I really do I hope maybe I persuaded some of y'all to maybe buy one uh, like I said I highly recommend it absolutely and uh, I would definitely put my name on this and guarantee you that it's gonna fire without fault without fault absolutely so I thank you guys for watching I really do and again if y'all know anything about the Taurus PT 1911 stainless any experiences please tell me uh, you know don't don't lie just because the Taurus and say it's shit you know I want some facts on it you know so Again, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching this review.